United Airlines Flight 2609 from Los Angeles to Boston. It was a smooth flight for the first five hours on Sunday until... So where's the Homeland Security with the gun? Because I'm waiting for them to point the gun at me so I can show everybody that I won't die when I take every bullet in that clip to wherever in my body they shoot it, and then I will kill every man on this plane. The agitated passenger is identified as Francisco Severo Torres of Massachusetts. The video obtained by CNN was recorded by a passenger. It shows Torres having violent outbursts towards other passengers and flight attendants. Hey, Bianca. I love you, Bianca. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you, Bianca. Four minutes, nervous passengers sat down and listened. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Where's Homeland Security? There should be Homeland Security. Where are they diverting us? Because wherever it is, there's going to be a bloodbath everywhere. 15 seconds later, Torres walks out of his seat, pulls what appears to be a makeshift weapon out of his jacket pocket, and said what no airline passenger ever wants to hear. So I'm taking over this plane. Oh my God. Dude, I'm uh -oh. telling you right now. Oh no. I'm telling you right now. While United Airlines says there were no reported injuries, the Justice Department says Torres rushed towards one of the flight attendants in a stabbing motion with a broken metal spoon, hitting the flight attendant on the neck area three times. Torres also told law enforcement that he tried to open the emergency door to jump out of the plane. Torres also claimed he was defending himself because he believed the flight crew was trying to kill him. Video shows passengers and crew members tackling and restraining Torres. A passenger told CNN Torres remained restrained for another 30 minutes before the plane landed safely at Boston Logan International Airport, where Torres was arrested. United Airlines says Torres has been banned from future flights on the carrier. He is detained right now pending a hearing before a judge on Thursday. John. So, Pete, you have this, but we're also learning of a new runway incursion that is under investigation this morning, the sixth recorded this year. What do you know? Well, this we're just learning about. It happened on February 16th, according to the NTSB, but it's investigating this incident now as these planes were both on the runway near the same time. Uh, American Airlines flight cleared to land on the runway at Sarasota Bradenton International Airport as an Air Canada Rouge flight was taking off. We know the NTSB is investigating this. No doubt it will come up tomorrow during a Senate hearing with the acting administrator of the FAA. Another safety incident on America's runways done. All right, Pete Montine, thank you. And joining us now is Lisa Olson, who was the passenger on that Los Angeles to Boston flight. She actually captured the video that we have been showing you this morning. And Lisa, first off, oh my goodness, and we are so glad that you're okay, because obviously this could have gone terribly, and we're grateful that you can join us this morning. What was it even like to be on this flight? The first, um, the first five hours of the flight was uneventful, um, quiet, normal flight. I was on with my husband and my daughter. Um, and, you know, about 30 minutes before we were landing, I heard, you know, a commotion. He was getting louder. Um, he was about two rows diagonally in back of me. And he just started rambling about, um, you know, his father's Dracula, the Nazis, um, just a lot of rambling. Um, and he was just getting louder and louder. A couple of passengers tried to talk to him to calm him down. It was only making him more agitated. Um, a woman tried to approach him and say that, um, you know, he was scaring the passengers. He didn't care. He was getting louder. Uh, and then a, a very large, like, built guy started work, walking from the back of the plane up to him. And when he saw that, he kind of, you know, jumped out of his seat and um, got in the aisle and, you know, started to, you know, like fight him um, or attempt to kind of pretend to fight him. I didn't see a, a weapon in his hand at that point, but he was, my, my husband was in the aisle seat. So he was standing like right next to my husband. I didn't see the, the spoon um, shank uh, um, until I saw the video after, after that. Um, and then he turned and ran towards the front of the plane. The United crew, um, was amazing. They blocked the first class entrance, which led to the cockpit. Uh, the flight attendants were there. Um, many men from the plane um, jumped up, uh, followed him. 
um, tackled him to the ground, and there were probably about four to six of them that sat on top of him to restrain him. Uh, the flight crew, you know, immediately had zip ties to zip tie his feet and his arms. Um, he was still screaming, um, and he somehow escaped from the zip ties. Um, they put new ones on him, and as the men were getting tired from restraining him, they kind of swapped out, and, you know, the ones that were tired would come back to sit down. People were thanking them, um, and very appreciative that, you know, they jumped into action so quickly. Yeah, he actually escaped from the zip ties at one point? He did. I think he was he was so out of control. Um, I don't know if they didn't, you know, get him on tight enough. Um, I don't know exactly what happened, if he busted out of them or if he just, you know, wiggled out of them. Um, but he was still very combative for the beginning part. So it, it may have been that. And but you... people at that point, once we knew that there were only you know, one additional set of zip ties left. People were sending up their belts um, to help wow. restrain him. That, it's remarkable to see how quickly all of your fellow passengers mm -hmm. responded. The fact that you were able to have the presence of mind to record this when you were sitting so close to him is remarkable. I can't believe there's just one pair of zip ties left. Did you notice anything beforehand, you know, when he was boarding the plane or in those several, that's a really long flight. Had you noticed any weird behavior from this man before then? I did not, and I questioned myself on that, but he was in back of me, so I didn't see him board. Um, he was sitting in the exit row in the middle, um, but he was two rows in back of me on the opposite side, so he was kind of diagonally in back of me. I didn't didn't notice him until I heard him. Yeah, and he, he attacked a flight attendant. Do you know how the flight attendant was doing? You know, what was it like getting off the plane after you, you safely landed? So when he um, stormed to the front and he was on the ground, um, he was, you know, the, the last, it was probably 30 minutes that they had him down there. Um, you know, towards the end, probably five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, he was quiet. Um, he was screaming a lot before that. And as soon as the plane landed, um, I think the flight attendant was, you know, okay. I don't think it was a, you know, a deep puncture wound. Um, but he was right in front of the door when they had him on the ground. Uh, the police, the Massachusetts State Police came on board, um, cuffed him, took him off the plane. Um, you know, the EMTs came in and attended to the flight attendant. Um, and then they, they came back and questioned, um, you know, some of the passengers. Lisa, this is a pretty jarring experience. I mean, we've been talking so much about close calls with flight takeoffs and turbulence and all of these things that have been happening in the skies, you know, this incident happening now as well. Does it make you hesitant to fly or scared to fly at all? Ironically, no. Um, my husband actually jumped on another flight yesterday morning and left. Um, I had my 17 year old daughter with me. She was very upset during the whole time. She was crying. She thought that we were going to crash. Um, but for whatever reason, the United crew, um, plus all the passengers being able to act so quickly just was very comforting. Um, I had confidence, complete confidence that they had everything under control and I didn't feel, um, you know, unsafe or in danger um, during that, that time period. Um, a lot came out after the fact. I think that I assumed that when he started yelling because he was quiet for the first five hours that I thought maybe it was drugs or something happened where it just he, it just set him off. I didn't realize that he was kind of planning this from the beginning. He was in the bathroom from a, for a long time um, before that with his backpack. Um, I heard that once the police officers were questioning the people in back of him because there was a woman back there that noticed that um, you know he did take his backpack into the bathroom. He was there for a long period of time, which is odd, um, and the officers. Um, grabbed his backpack. Um, and the other odd thing that I kind of noticed was I, I was expecting it to be kind of messy. And it was a very neat black backpack. It had hand sanitizer in the side pocket. It was um, just the whole situation was a little surreal. It, the entire situation is surreal. Lisa, we're, we're grateful that you recorded mm -hmm. this so we could actually see it and that you and your fellow passengers were so quick to respond to this. Thank you for, for coming on and for, for sharing that with us. We're so glad that everything's okay. Please tell your husband and your daughter that, that we're thinking about them as well.